coldest city in the Philippines, and we're excited to see all of the amazing things that this place has to offer. And after watching our friend's awesome Cebu episode, always be changing, we knew we had to come here for the food scene. But that'll be for our next vlog where the boys hunt for the best lechon in town. Oh. Oh. Mm. Now for today's episode, we're taking you on a tour of the city's rich history and culture where we'll be stopping by some famous landmarks and attractions that have stood the test of time. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore this vibrant city. What's happening guys? You're watching Mom Duty. Join us as we travel around the world. And by the way, if you missed our last five Cebu episodes, let us give you a quick update. First, we flew into Dumaguete Airport, which is south of Cebu. And then took a ferry to the bluest water I've ever seen. That's this one. After that, we swam with some gentle giants. And that's that one. Then we spent a night in a dome-shaped tent. It was amazing. And this one. And then what was even cooler was hiking to the highest peak of Cebu. And that's that one. Finally, we climbed and jumped off waterfall cliff. It was scary, but cool. That's this one. Ready, jump. Alright, so our starting point guys is in Colon Street. It is the oldest street in the Philippines and it was named after Christopher Columbus, the famous explorer who discovered America. But here's a bit of irony, Columbus never ever set foot in Cebu City or the Philippines, unlike Ferdinand Magellan who was actually the first European to reach Cebu in 1521. However, he has no streets named after him on this island. Anyways, Colon Street may be old, but it is still alive and kicking. As you can tell, it is one of the busiest streets in Cebu City where you can find everything from malls, markets, banks, schools, hotels, restaurants, and a lot of other stuff. So back in the day when the Spanish were running things around here, this street was a pretty big deal for business. The Chinese, the Spaniards, the Filipinos, they all did their trading on this street. And most of them lived around here too. So as a result, all of that mingling of different cultures left a lasting impression on Cebu's identity from their culture to their food. Now, if you can manage to ignore the honking and the crazy flow of traffic, Golon Street is a must-see. It's loaded with history, plus it's a super handy street that connects to other really cool places that we'll be hitting up soon. Which one would you which one would you get if you could pick one? So not only is it a bit hectic and noisy and crowded, but it is also a bit run down. I mean it is the oldest street in the Philippines. But one thing for sure, you don't see trash anywhere here. You still see the old school style of all the wires and uh, run down buildings. But at the same time, no trash on the floor, super clean, and I don't see any homelessness too. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so here's a cool story, guys. This behind me is the Basilica del Santo Niño, the oldest Catholic church in the Philippines and what makes this special is that it houses a statue of baby Jesus that Ferdinand Magellan gave to the Queen of Cebu way back in 1521. What makes this story extra special is that when Magellan was killed, some of his surviving men set fire to the village where they left the statue of baby Jesus. And the local people believed that the statue along with everything else had been destroyed. However, in 1565, when another Spanish 
expedition led by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived in Cebu, they discovered the statue inside a wooden box among the ashes of a burnt house. How cool is that? Now, according to history, the object was miraculously intact and undamaged by the fire. The Spaniards were so amazed by this that they considered it a miracle and decided to build a church on the spot where they found it. Now, throughout the centuries, this church has been expanded and renovated several times until it became what it is today. So the exterior looks like a mix of different styles from different times and places. Right now, about half of the building is under construction with that blue tarp. There's also this massive dome and a row of columns that Knox says looks like they came straight from ancient Rome. Plus, there are tons of fancy decorations and arched openings. And also there are carvings of priests, saints, and angels that tell for sure their own little stories. But of course, the best story of them all is the statue of baby Jesus, where it's kept inside a glass behind the main altar of the basilica. I can't believe it's right behind me. Today, the statue is believed to be miraculous, and every year, millions of people visit the basilica to see it and seek its help. And every third Sunday of January, Cebu hosts the Finalog Santo Niño Festival, the biggest and most colorful grand parade in the Philippines to celebrate this miracle. There you have it, Basilica del Santo Niño is a place of miracles and good times. Now here's the crazy part about this. If there was no Magellan, there probably might not be a statue or this church right here. Magellan's probably looking down and saying, hey, where's my street name, y'all? But we're gonna go ahead and cross the street and go to another spot that has Magellan's name written all over it, by the way. Okay, the significance of Magellan in Cebu is truly an understatement because besides the baby Jesus statue and the basilica, we also have one of the most iconic landmarks, the Magellan's Cross. So when Magellan landed in Cebu, he met with the ruler and gave him the cross you see right behind me. But the most significant part is that he convinced him to convert to Christianity along with 800 other Cebuanos. However, it turns out that not everyone was super thrilled to convert to Magellan's religion. And one person in particular, Lapu Lapu, who was a chief from the nearby Macton Island, ended up battling and killing him. Anyways, Magellan's Cross is a cool reminder of Magellan's impact on Philippines history and culture. It's been around for ages, and it's one of the first Christian symbols in Asia. Plus, it's a major tourist spot in Cebu City. Good health, good work, and happy family. Viva Pitsinor Pasalamat sa family. What a beautiful experience that was. And she said a prayer for our family. She said our names. I don't know exactly what she was saying, but it sounded beautiful. It was very special. Okay, so seeing the statue of baby Jesus was surreal because we have learned and researched and read this story about him here. It was much smaller than I anticipated it, but it was such a great experience to see that in person you read about it but then to see it in person wow i will never forget this day in the city of cebu all right guys i was wrong this is actually magellanist street not necessarily magellan but magellanist street they don't have the uh, sign but someone just told me that they did name a street after ferdinand magellan so he does get some street love All right, guys, we are now at the Heritage Cebu Monument, and it showcases some really cool sculptures, as you can see. And here you can see a scene of a battle 
between Magellan and Lapu Lapu. That's the guy that killed Magellan. And there's also a cross that represents how Christianity was brought to Cebu by Ferdinand Magellan. And then you have the Basilica del Santo Niño over here along with baby Jesus. And I think everything is made out of bronze and stone and maybe something else. Whatever it is, the artist did an amazing job making everything look so realistic and beautiful, guys. So we're actually in a taxi and we try to get a grab, but they're unavailable. Sirao Garden is very nice. Very nice? Very nice area, like look. Yeah. Any foreigner to go like that. All right, yeah, yeah, all right. Nice. It's good for camera. Yeah, camera, yeah. All right, guys, you heard that. Another beautiful place, yeah. a location that's been highly recommended to us is to go to Top of Cebu and check out this garden out there. Okay, okay. Then we're gonna go to another place called yeah. Temple of Leah. Yeah. And then uh, most likely uh, go to a restaurant there called Top of Cebu Restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of traffic. I think it's gonna take about how long? Oh, one hour. One hour. One hour. Just like Manila, there's a lot of traffic here. Yeah, I'm Manila. I don't like Manila. Yeah, kind of looks like Manila, but uh, but a little bit more chill and relax. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's more like the island vibe. But then again, you have the uh, 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 traffic just like Manila. So the climb to the top is about 2,000 feet and you could already feel the drop in temperature. That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so sticking to the topic of beautiful places, we're now at Sirao Garden. This place is like a flower heaven that will give you the vibe of being in Amsterdam. You'll see all the colorful fields of celosia flowers which are also called coxcomb because they look like the heads of roosters. <laughs> this place became popular in 2015 when photos of its colorful flowers went viral on social media. But this place is not just for flower lovers, it's also for Instagram lovers. There are so many spots here where you can take amazing photos and videos. You can post with giant windmills, cute bicycles, wooden bridges, and even a hand. Yes! a hand and the best part is that this place is very affordable it only costs 70 pesos per person to enter and you can stay as long as you want this is like one of those little like nests where you can take pictures and you get this gorgeous view if you guys are ever in Cebu City you guys must drive out to Surao garden it is gorgeous it feels sort of like a sanctuary like a temple where you just come here feed the pigeons have some alone time quiet time just taking the view of beautiful Cebu but um, I can hear Noxania just chasing all of the pigeons you want to try holding it me? I don't want to hold it in Oh. I got it! Oh. Ow. That was a beautiful garden. Now we are headed to the next, second to the last stop, I believe. Yes, Temple of Leah. made it to Temple of Leah. How much was the entrance? 120. So this thing has a pretty cool story. And let the master storyteller Rocio tell you all about it. Wow. Oh my gosh. Can we have our anniversary here one day? Look at how beautiful and romantic this is. Is this the Philippines? <laughs> I feel like we're in Italy or something. It, it looks Greek, but it could be Rome depending on the style of the of yeah the, the, the Hey, we we're just in Amsterdam. Oh yeah. Now in we're in Rome. It's a sushi vodka. Look at they got the pee all over the place. They got the, the boobies. 
Okay, who would have thought that this is up here? I mean, check this out, guys. This is the Temple of Leah. It's a huge mansion that looks like it came straight out of a Greek mythology book. You've got the intricate carvings, the statues, the columns, the fountains, totally Roman-inspired architecture, right, yeah, Noxie? But it could be Greek, though. Could be Greek. So <laughs> put, put in the comments down below if you're an architecture lover, a Greek or Roman. <laughs> Check down below, comment. Greek or Roman, guys, let us know. <laughs> now, this temple was built by a rich Filipino named Teodorico Adarna, who wanted to show his love for his wife, Leah. Aww. He was so in love with her that he decided to make this temple as a tribute to her and fill it with all of her stuff. But wait, there's more. This temple is not just a fancy temple. It's also a museum, which showcases Leah's collections of antiques and books and jars and just many other things that she collected over the years. So you can see how much she loves shopping and collecting stuff from different countries. I think there's like 24 chambers here of all the things she collected. There's chambers after chambers after chambers. What a man! It's not even a mansion. It's like it's a palace. Yeah, it's a palace. Temple slash palace. And just like the last spot, you can see everything from the skyline to the mountains to the sea. It's like having your own private balcony on top of the world. It's beautiful. Five, four, three. This is how Roman statues looked like back then. It's off. Oh. <laughs> What the heck? Get out of here. Uh, that's a sensor. Let's go, let's go. We just got a peek of that view and it is beautiful, but we are gonna go to the top of Cebu to end our night. I'm uh, counting on you to build me a temple <laughs> like this. With a shrine of you naked in the middle <laughs> yes. of the fountain. Yes. I think Melvin would with, love that. With my bosom. <laughs> you are in love with me, right? Alright, <laughs> mm -hmm. change the plans guys. We were gonna go to the Top of Cebu restaurant, but we just passed by this uh, really cool restaurant called La Vie in the Sky. So it's not at the Top of Cebu, but I think it's close. So we are gonna eat here instead. Uh, keeping with the European inspired theme because this is a French restaurant. Again, we just did Amsterdam and we did Rome. Now we're doing France. Whoa, look at all these twinkling lights. Wow. Okay, let's take you upstairs. Wanna check it out? Whoa, I want these. I want this in my room. Whoa, hi, how are you? Hi. Oh, there's a bar up here. Okay, the view at the very top, the third floor, the best view. Oh my gosh, there's no obstruction. You can see a whole of Cebu. It's insane. Oh, wow. And I, I think besides, I, this could also be like an Italian, right? Italian restaurant? Ah, this is so cozy here. We had a blast exploring Cebu City for the first time. It's such a cool and diverse place with so much to see and do. In fact, the whole island of Cebu has so much to offer. Our favorite being canyoneering. So if you missed it, make sure to click here to watch us jump off them waterfall cliffs. Click right here.